If you want to keep your laptop, phone, emergency radio, flashlights, and other small electronics powered during an emergency, they all run on USB nowadays. So why not get a power station that focuses on offering the best USB output? That's why I originally built my micro power system with the Anchor 737 power bank and a Flex Solar 40 watt panel as a tiny affordable USB power station that's perfect for taking on the go. Since then, I've been on the lookout for ways to upgrade this kit with a larger and long lasting lithium iron phosphate or LFP battery and more powerful solar panels. I found three LFP power stations that you need to know about. Let's get into it. Since my video last year, Anchor has rolled out successors to the 737 with features like smartphone app support and a wireless charging dock, but they're pretty much the same inside. Alternatives like the Ugreen Nexode power banks increase USB-C output up to 200 watts, but all of these options use standard lithium ion batteries, and I wanted to find some power banks with safer and longer lasting LFP cells. Jackery sent me their new Explorer 100 kit. This comes really nicely packaged with everything you need, 40 watt panel, the Explorer 100, solar panel connector cable, USB-C cable, and a nice zippered carrying bag to keep the cables organized. So it's basically a pre-made micro power station. That's pretty cool. It retails for $229, which is actually cheaper than the Anchor 737 and Flex Solar 40 watt panel combo at $250. And they've been offering a $30 coupon for a street price of around $190. Spec-wise, this is similar to my original micro power station, but it upgrades the battery to LFP chemistry rated at 2000 cycles, so it has at least four times the lifespan of the Anchor 737, and is much safer too. It's more of a cube shape compared to the long square shape of the 737, and weighs around 50% more at 34 ounces, or just under one kilogram, because LFP batteries are less energy dense than typical lithium ion batteries. The Explorer 100 looks like a tiny version of their larger power stations. There's a pair of 100 watt USB-C power delivery 3.0 ports and an 18 watt USB-A port. On the left is a button to turn the display on and off. There's a color display that shows the state of charge, input and output power, and time to empty or full, just like their larger power stations. Like the 737, it's a really small display and not super bright, but inside it's pretty easy to read. To test USB output, I plug this into my MacBook Pro and charged at 92 watts. Plugging in my iPad Pro into the second port divided the 100 watt output between the two at 62 watts for the Mac and 33 watts for the iPad. Adding in the USB-A port, all three worked at the same time, but it always divided the output to stay within the 100 watt max. To test recharging, I plug this into a couple different power delivery chargers and was able to recharge this at around 82 to 85 watts. I expect charge times of about an hour and a half, which is probably better for the battery health anyway. I also tested if I could push power in and out at the same time, and yes, I was able to charge at close to 100 watts while outputting 100 watts, which is awesome. During all these tests, it was completely silent because there's no fan and it ran cool. It would be nice if this supported PD 3.1 the 737 can support up to 140 watts of output, but it's not a deal breaker for such a small power station. The Solar Saga 40 watt solar panel is a compact monocrystalline ETFE panel with four sections, metal corner grommets, and a slick magnetic closure. It's IP68 rated, has a two year warranty, and weighs 2.6 pounds or 1.2 kilograms. Jackery made the strange decision to not include standard DC output and USB-C ports on the panel. Instead, they have a proprietary port that connects this to a heavy duty three meter or nine foot cable that attaches to the supplied USB-C adapter. You then plug this into either port on the power station. In my test, this panel delivered its full 30 watt rating of USB-C power with an average of 28 to 30 watts. Unlike other 30 to 40 watt panels I've tested that quickly overheated or never delivered on their ratings, this panel just works and is surprisingly reliable across a range of conditions. I was easily able to recharge the Explorer 100 in four to five hours, so you can definitely recharge this in one good day of sun. I really don't like that Jackery uses these proprietary ports on the solar panel, but I have to admit it all works together perfectly as a system. And I really like how beefy and long the cable is because you can put the power station away from the sun to protect it from heat. And that's good because if you leave it in direct sun, it will definitely overheat. To round this system out, you'll want to pick up a USB-C wall charger rated at 50 to 100 watts. 
You can use a charger you already have from your laptop, but I like this Ugreen Nexode Pro 65 watt charger they sent me because it's super tiny, uses efficient GAN technology, has three ports, a folding plug, and all metal construction for $55. If you want to charge this in your car and it doesn't have USB-C ports built in, you can pick up a small USB-C cigarette adapter like the SyncWire that delivers 30 watts for $15 or go with a bigger one for faster recharges. I got to admit I had low expectations for the Explorer 100 kit, but I kind of feel like Jackery hit this one out of the park. It's perfect for people who want a simple plug and play system with solid performance and no hassles. It works great and for 190 bucks, it's a surprisingly good value. For a larger and more powerful option, the Ugreen 300 watt power bank has a 50% larger LFP battery at 154 watt hours, and that's rated for 3,000 cycles. It weighs 3.5 pounds or 1.6 kilograms and retails for $199, though it regularly goes on sale for $150. It has a large display that shows the state of charge, input, and output power. It's a pretty simple design, similar to my River 2 Max, and is easy to read from a distance, unlike the Jackery or Anchor. There's a button in the center to turn the display on and off. On the left side is a light with a cool color temperature around 5000 Kelvin with two levels of brightness and SOS. There's a plastic handle on top to carry it. It works, but it sort of feels cheap. Size wise, this is basically the size of two Anchor 737s, which makes sense because it has one and a half times the battery capacity and uses bulkier LFP battery cells. To use that extra battery, there's five USB ports. That's two more than the Anchor 737 and Explorer 100. There is one 140 watt port that supports PD 3.1, a pair of 100 watt PD 3.0 ports, and a pair of 22 and a half watt USB A ports. In my test, I was able to pull its full 300 watt rating across the three USB C ports, which is extremely impressive. To test efficiency, I pulled 100 watts from USB-C until the battery was fully drained and measured 132 watt hours, which is 88% of the 150 watt hour battery capacity, and that's well above average. The first USB-C port can also be used to recharge this at up to 140 watts. To test that, I used this Ugreen 160 watt wall charger and took about an hour and a half to recharge from empty. To charge this from the car, you can use a charger that plugs into the cigarette port. I tested this Ugreen 130 watt car charger and was able to output a solid 100 watts of power. I was curious if you could recharge this while powering devices at the same time, and the answer is yes. I was able to recharge it at 140 watts while outputting 200 watts from the other two ports, which is very impressive. Since the Ugreen doesn't have a solar charge controller, you need to find a solar panel with USB-C power delivery ports. So the limiting factor here isn't how large the panels are, but how many watts they can reliably push through USB-C. To recharge a 150 watt hour battery in the five hours of good sun you get on an average day, you need at least 30 watts of steady USB-C output. I tested a bunch of solar panels to find the best one to recommend. For criteria, I required that all the panels I looked at had monocrystalline solar cells with rugged ETFE coating an IP67 waterproof rating, and USB-C had to be included. My original micropower station used the FlexSolar 40 watt panel, which retails for $100. It's a very basic panel with no kickstands or metal grommets, but claims 40 watts of PD output. It's the smallest option when folded, but very long because it has five panels strung together. Lying flat, the FlexSolar put out 23 watts according to my USB-C meter, which is well below its claimed 40 watt rating. I angled it up against a wall and saw up to 32 watts, but without kickstands, that's going to be hard to manage in the real world. In the end, the Flex Solar Panel falls short of its rating and isn't powerful enough to recharge the Ugreen in one day. The Big Blue 30 watt panel was my top pick for a small solar panel in my previous video because it has three panels, a single kickstand, supports PD 20 watts, and retails for $90. Its three panels over delivered at 23 watts when angled with its included kickstand, but only output 18 watts when flat. It's taller than the other panels when folded, and the single kickstand in the center means this droops quite a bit on the sides. In the end, this just isn't powerful enough to fill the Ugreen in one day. EcoFlow has a new 45 watt folding panel that I was excited to test. It has four panels, includes a nice DC to XT60 cable, and retails for $100. Unfortunately, in my tests, it only delivered around 13 watts, whether flat or angled. Since it underperformed its 20 watt PD spec with USB C, this one is out of the running. But that said, the DC output was much better at 36 watts, so it's a solid option for power stations with a solar charge controller. 
The Sunjack 40-watt panel is the most premium panel in the group at $130. It upgrades the USB-C output to PD 30 watts, has two kickstands, a mesh storage pocket, and includes both a USB-C cable and a really nice DC cable with XT60, Anderson, and 5521 adapters on the end, and a full set of adapter tips. In my test, it crushed its rating, with almost 40 watts of PD power when angled and 28 watts lying flat. That's very impressive. For the Ugreen 300 watt power bank, the clear winner is the Sunjack 40 watt panel. Its powerful PD output means it's the only solar panel that can fully recharge this power station on a sunny day. Although it's a little more expensive, the output is almost double the other panels in this class, and the extra adapters and better build quality make it an excellent value. The boss level of USB power stations is the Anker Solix 300DC. It has a huge 288 watt hour LFP battery rated at 3000 cycles, four USB-C ports that support up to 140 watts, two 12 watt USB-A ports, a regulated 12 volt port that can run things like a portable fridge, a 100 watt solar charge controller with XT60 connector, a super bright display with state of charge input and output power, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and a really slick app for iOS and Android to monitor and control it remotely. On top, there's an extendable light with a warm color temperature and three levels of brightness. It's literally everything I'm looking for in a USB-focused power station. It retails for $200, but I got it on sale for $150, which is an amazing value. For USB-C, there's a pair of 140-watt PD 3.1 ports, a 100-watt port, and a 15-watt port for smaller items. There's also a pair of 15-watt USB-A ports. To test how efficient the USB-C ports are, I started at 100% and pulled 100 watts until the battery died. I measured 277 watt hours of the 288 watt hour capacity, which means I got an impressive 96% of its rating, which is well above average. You can recharge this quickly by plugging in two 140 watt wall chargers. I saw up to 268 watts of charging power and it charged from zero to 100% in just an hour and 28 minutes. With a single 140 watt charger, it took just under two and a half hours. The regulated 12 volt port is very useful to run something like a DC fridge. I was able to pull its full rating of 10 amps or 130 watts and the voltage stayed steady. It had no problem running my Iceco JP40 fridge in freezer mode and even my larger Dometic dual zone fridge. I tested how efficient the DC output was by plugging in my load tester and draining it over five hours. I measured 276 watt hours of the 288 watt hour capacity, so it's also 96% efficient with DC output. That's excellent. Most people won't be using the DC output all the time, so you can get even more USB ports by plugging in a small car charger. I found this tiny sync wire charger that sits flush inside the DC port and can output up to 30 watts with its USB-C and USB-A ports. Having eight USB ports is awesome for charging up tons of gear at the same time and is miles better than the two to three ports you get on a typical small power station. To charge this from your car, you should get the most powerful charger you can find. This Ugreen 100 watt car charger is about as powerful as you can get without overloading the cigarette port and it worked great. For solar charging the Anker 300DC, you'll want an 80 to 120 watt panel since it has twice the battery capacity of the Ugreen. Anchor sent me their recommended panel to pair with the 300DC, the Solix PS100. It's a 100 watt monocrystalline bifold panel that's easy to set up and has a cool kickstand design that uses snaps to position it at one of four angles. It has MC4 outputs and they include MC4 extension cables, an MC4 to XT60 adapter, and an XT60 to 8mm adapter. It retails for $299, but it's currently on sale for $179. In my test, I got up to 76 watts from this panel when I angled it and used the DC output. So it's a little bit below average on output. For a budget option, the Powerness 80 watt panel is a good choice because it retails for only $110. It's a lightweight, compact bifold design with metal grommets, dual kickstands, and a zippered pocket for the included cables. The coolest feature is this has an LCD display to show you the output power per port. Unfortunately, this only comes with 8mm DC output and an adapter to switch sizes, but no XT60. So I needed to buy this adapter to plug it into the Anker solar input. In my tests, it output 61 watts, which is pretty solid, and would almost recharge this in a good day of sun. This DJI solar panel has four sections with metal grommets, two kickstands, and zippered compartment with XT60 output, so I can plug this right into the Anker. 
It's expensive at $300, but it output 90 watts, which is very impressive and can recharge the Anchor 300 DC in about three and a half hours. I compared this to the XSTAR SP100 panel because it's one of my favorites and it over delivered on its 100 watt rating when I tested it. This is a bifold design with two kickstands and an integrated pocket for cables. It includes a DC cable with barrel connector, extension cable, and a few adapter tips for $240. To plug this into the Anchor, I needed to buy a 5521 to XT60 adapter for $9. I measured 88 watts, which is very good, and only 2 watts less than the more expensive DJI. The Sunjack 120 watt panel is by far the nicest panel I've tested, with three kickstands that make it super flat and rigid, metal grommets, and a zippered pouch that has an integrated heavy duty cable with MC4 connectors and a long MC4 adapter cable with XT60. Anderson and 5521 plugs. This is unique because it also includes USB A and a 60 watt USB C power delivery port. That's a feature no other 100 watt panels have. It retails for $275, which is right between the XSTAR and DJI panels for price. In my test, it output 86 watts plugged into the solar input, which is just 4 watts less than the top performing DJI. It also delivered a whopping 67 watts through its USB-C port, which is the most I've ever seen in a solar panel. In the end, I have two recommended solar panels to pair with the Anker 300DC. The Powerness 80 watt panel is a great budget pick because it has a nice set of features, a compact lightweight design, and will give you 60 watts of DC power for only $110. It may not fully recharge the Anker in one day, but it will be close. The USB output is pretty weak and it doesn't include MC4 or XT60 plugs, but you can't beat the price. My upgrade pick is the Sunjack 120 watt panel because it gives you similar output to the DJI and XSTAR, but has better build quality, super flat and rigid kickstands, a massive 60 watt USB-C output, weatherproof MC4 connectors, and includes a ton of adapters to plug it into any power station. You'll need to decide if the $275 asking price is worth it, but it is the nicest panel I've tested and it's priced competitively to the DJI and XSTAR units. In the end, if you want a compact USB focused micro power system that uses long lasting LFP batteries, these are my recommended kits. First, the Jackery Power 100 with 40 watt solar panel is a slick all in one kit with 100 watt hours of LFP batteries, three USB ports that delivers reliable performance in a compact, lightweight package for $229. The Ugreen 300 watt power station gives you 150 watt hours of LFP battery and five USB ports. Pair it with the Sunjack 40 watt panel for a slick $280 kit. For the most power, step up to the Anker Solix 300DC with Powerness 80 watt panel for $310. It has 300 watt hours of LFP batteries and six USB ports that can be expanded to eight with the addition of a car charger. To charge this even faster and be compatible with larger power stations, upgrade to the Sunjack 120 watt panel. All right, everyone, let me know what you think about these micro power systems in the comments and let me know if you have any recommendations of good units to look at. Thanks for watching everyone, till next time.